the Andrew Brown shooting was justified. Plain and simple. It really was. Now, I, I think a lot of people thought that it was justified from the very beginning, but now we actually have the full body cam footage to make that determination even more clear. So before I get into this, just a quick reminder to like this video, to subscribe to the channel, but the best thing you can do is to to help me out in this situation is to share this video. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of the story leading up to the events that took place, and then we'll watch a bit of the body cam footage. So this is Andrew Brown. He was, they the, the police actually had a warrant out for his arrest, and we're going to do that, to go ahead and arrest him for that warrant. So this is important because this isn't an innocent person right off the bat. I don't care what the Democrats are saying. This was not an innocent guy. So the, the story kind of goes in where they said the morning of the incident, the deputies were briefed on Brown's criminal history and interactions with law enforcement. He noted Brown's resisting arrest charges, convictions for assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and assault inflicting serious injury dating back to 1995. So this guy had a long criminal history. That's very important when you go to serve an arrest warrant. It's not some guy that just happened to do one bad thing and then they go to show up to serve this, this warrant or whatever. That's not what happened. This guy had a very long history. It's almost like they showed up and they knew there's a very, very, very high chance that this guy was going to actually resist arrest, which is very important to know. By the way, this is the kind of stuff that they would usually use to justify a no-not warrant because it shows that they know that when if the guy knows it's the cops, they're going to shoot back, they're going to try to kill somebody. That's the way that these people behave in these situations. So his record played into the way that they were going to basically actually come to this situation. And so what took place is that as they were going to serve this warrant, they arrived on the scene there, he was in his car, and then the guy decides that he's going to try to drive off. So let's go ahead and check out the video uh, so we can have some context as to exactly what took place here and why it's uh, extremely important on what they're doing. So this is the newly released footage showing exactly what took place in the situation. And you're going to see it's only about 45 seconds. It's actually very quick, um, but you're going to see them rolling up here. And I'll kind of just go and play through this. So the cops are in the back of a, a truck or something like that right now, and they're pulling up to the scene. They're going to serve, they're getting out. Yep. So they're serving a warrant. What does this guy do? They told him to stop the car. Look, he just hit a guy with the car. And then they start shooting. And then they go after him to see basically what took place. I think they said he was only shot twice. I actually, he was uh, shot in the arm. Then I think the actual fatal blow was to the back of his neck or something like that. So what you saw was a very short interaction where a guy tries to run over a cop with a car and they told him to stop several, several times and he refuses to do that. That makes it justified. It's an unfortunate incident, of course, because what we would prefer is that nobody does that. But vehicular manslaughter is a thing. Running somebody over with a with a car is a is a thing that you can do. That is a using force or some type of deadly situation and and using that to injure somebody. If if the officer that he literally hit with his car feels that he's in threat of his life, which I would feel anybody would be if you're about to be hit by somebody with a car or actually hit with the with the, the actual car, which is what it looked like. It looked like he actually made contact. It's hard to kind of see, but it looked like he made contact with a guy with the car. So what we could judge in this situation is that. You're, you're forfeiting your chances of living at that point. You really are. Because they have an, an arrest warrant. You don't get to just go running away and doing whatever you want. Once again, though, how stupid does it look when you have people protesting this guy? I mean, this is the same type of situation with all the other people where they look at this and they say, we must defend this guy. We, we're going to speak at their, at their funeral. And, and they were just such an upstanding citizen. But it's a lie. This guy was never a good citizen. He was never this this person that was having this outstanding life and then all of a sudden just unfortunate situations took place. It's these incidents that celebrities point to and Democrats point to to say that this is that this is why black men should fear for their lives and blah blah blah. And that's it's just not true. It's not true at all. 
Um, but they go on in the article, going through all of the different situations, talking about the deputies perceiving a threat. That's what this was. Deputies immediately perceived a threat. The Constitution simply does not require officers to gamble with their lives. That's the truth. It's not the officer's job to just be perfectly okay to judge the situation. Well, you know, it's fine. No big deal. I'll, I'll just kind of try to figure out if if they really, if we should let them go or not. Officers aren't there to gamble. If you were pulled over by the cops, get out of the car, don't act like an idiot, and you keep your life. You're not going to get shot. <laughs> like, seriously, you're not going to get shot if you're not resisting arrest. It's just as simple as that, especially when you try to use a car to run over an officer. So that's why they're saying that the deadly force was justified in this situation. A violent felon using a deadly weapon to place to place their lives in danger. The weapon being the vehicle. Okay. You can't do that. They say that the uh, um, Lunsford had his hands on the door of Brown's vehicle, pulling the deputy off his feet onto the hood. So once again, all of these just situations where this guy was not going to stop. He wasn't going to stop. Now, when they leave, what else is this guy going to do? And that's going to come into play. What, what happens if they let this guy go? Um, so I'm going to go down to where the some of the, the BLM people and, and where he obviously had people um, talking about this. That are the, the, the kind of ones, the black people that come out of nowhere, all the lawyers and what Al Sharpton, for example, coming out there trying to give all of these stupid, ridiculous statements on this incident as if it's always always a bad thing, even though they have no idea what actually took place. So let's look at the kind of the stupidity behind what they're talking about here. So this is, I believe from Sharpton here, he said, it is obvious that there are political motivations behind the DA's nonsensical and unjustifiable decision. Now he's saying all this, I'm pretty sure before this body cam footage was released. Now the, the, the police department already said it was, it looks justified from what we're showing here. But this is what they're saying before all of this came out. By this time, though, we already knew this guy had a criminal record. They knew that he was resisting arrest. They just didn't have the body cam footage to prove it at this point. So this is kind of what they're saying here. So this other reverend, I don't know what it is about all of these reverends coming out of nowhere. I, I, don't, I don't get that uh, to talk about these stupid <laughs> incidents. But um, the, the one of the guys, uh, Barber, that's one of the reverends or whatever, said... To uh, said Womble was behaved like a defense a attorney for the officers involved in the shooting. And he said federal investigators need to look at the case and at the practices within the sheriff's office. When asked during the press conference whether officers would have allowed Brown to escape, then picked him up later, Womble said they sh could not simply let him go. And Barber, the reverend guy, said that his remarks indicates Womble regards a warrant as a license to kill. That's a lie. That's a blatant lie. It's not a license to kill. I'll tell you what is a license to kill. What's a pretty much play stupid games, win stupid prizes moment for all of this is trying to run over a police car or a police officer with your car. <laughs> like that is at that point, giving the officers a complete license to kill. You know who else that gives a complete license to kill? Everyone in the United States. If somebody is trying to run you over with their car for your own self-defense, you can legally shoot that person to defend yourself. You're not, th this is ridiculous that they're looking at this in a situation of just saying, oh, warrant just means, you know, just go on site and just kill the person. That's not what this is. And you're misrepresenting the argument by saying that. That's what's so ridiculous. And even them asking, well, wouldn't it have been fine if we just let the guy escape and just picked him up later? Surely that that's going to clearly play out the way that you think it is, right? Yeah, just when he goes down to the gas station, getting some gas, just have the officers pull up and hey, I know we had a altercation about 10 minutes ago, but we're cool now, right? You want, you're going to go in handcuffs now? Come on. You know, this doesn't make sense. What, what did you, what did this guy have to do that was that urgent that he had to run over a police officer in order to get to, to do like, really? What was that? What was happening? But sir, I'm late for work. I mean, come on. Like it's, it's ridiculous that they make these statements. Um, but they, the, the same Reverend guy goes on and he says far too many killings of black men and women have been ruled justifiable only to be proven later that they were not. Well, it was proven as justified and it is justified. There's no situation where you're going to get away with this type of behavior in this statement. You're making an assumption. You're assuming something's racist. You're just lying. The fact is that this guy, once again, when you look at this guy's rap sheet, the stuff that he's done in the past, I think it's important to look at what he did. What, what did he do? And I'd love to dive into more of his 
uh, criminal record. I don't have that on hand right now, but I would love to kind of get a look at that and see who was it that he was holding at gunpoint. I'm assuming there were other black people. I'm assuming that's what it was. This guy was probably a nuisance to the community. Aren't robbing people, uh, uh, whatever, and, and threatening people and doing other things that were against the law. Never has complied with law enforcement before. This is a guy that was not a good, upstanding citizen. But as unfortunate as the situation may be, it's hard to feel that bad about it, considering the fact that you, you just can't play these stupid games and expect some magical outcome to take place. You just can't. The, and they had no choice but to defend themselves in that situation and to apprehend this guy. It is what it is. Stop resisting arrest. You automatically won't be in this situation. Also, just stop committing a ridiculous amounts of crimes so you don't have an arrest warrant out for you as well. So with that being said, just another situation where it's a justified shooting. It's undeniable. I don't care what they want to pin this as. It just is simple, simply justified. So with that being said, I thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.